Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews, it's Gaming Friday, I'm Gary and I'm Jeff and today we're going to take a look at Life Is Strange which came out on the 29th of January 2015 mm -hmm. and it was developed by Don't Nod Entertainment which is a French company Yeah. and, uh, and Life Is Strange is available on the PS4, the Xbox One the PS3, <laughs> the Xbox 360, PC, Mac, you know. Anything, they, anything that can run Unreal 3, basically. Anything, exactly. Anything that can run an Unreal Engine game, you'll find this game. Which is good. <laughs> this game deserves to be on as many platforms as possible. Absolutely. Uh, now, Don't Nod Entertainment have only really got two games under their belt. Mm. And uh, the first game they released was Remember Me back in 2010 right which was a cyberpunk action adventure game okay again with a, a female lead which the game though was sort of criticized for its gameplay but it received high praise for its story and its narrative right mm -hmm. which is something that life is strange has also received quite favorable reviews especially well, yeah. in terms of its storytelling it's its peak feature really definitely in, in life is strange as well i've not played remember me uh, this is my first introduction to don't nod stuff so yeah that's a great it's, it's going to be a lot of people's introduction to the company yeah now this game also struggled initially to pick up a uh, a distributor yeah uh, of course they developed the game and then they were like well we need somebody to publish it Square Enix came along and went, okay, yeah. we'll do you the the digital public, you know, publication for it. Yeah. Uh, but then, obviously, ever since the digital format arised, episode one, of course, this was released over five episodes throughout mm. the entire year. A bit like a Telltale series. Very much like a Telltale game. And of course, as each episode released, the momentum kept picking up, and then eventually it won Game of Year awards. Uh, the physical copies of the game yeah. is out there, and so, but. But now I am really excited about what Don't Nod Entertainment's working on next. Yeah. They're working on a title called Vampire, or Vampire, <laughs> and that's due out sort of quarter four 2017. Yeah. And that game looks like, it, it, it looks like it's borrowed elements from Remember Me, and very much so it, the strength of its storytelling with Life is Strange into this vampire world mm -hmm. where your choices and the way that you play the character will impact the world and the characters around you and it looks it looks beautiful and at the same time just the attention to the detail and the architecture that this company has moved into yeah. is really exciting at the same time they are also working on a sequel to Life is Strange. Are they? Uh, so, yeah, now whether there's... Uh, yeah, there's some loose ends they could definitely tie up, I think. Well, unfortunately, for the fans of this game, yeah. the sequel looks like it will have nothing to do with this game. Okay. It's going to be in an entirely different location with right. an entirely different yeah, selection yeah. of characters, mm -hmm. okay, but the that's, themes that's, maybe were just of the well. game will continue. Right, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like let's tell mm -hmm. a whole new story. Let's not limit ourselves with sequelitis and mm -hmm. trying yeah. to keep these characters going. Yeah, let's just do it all over again, but in a new setting and keep it fresh. Yeah. So and I think that has a lot of potential. I think this this game could be the beginning of a really good franchise as well well yeah i mean there's no reason why if they can keep telling stories like this do you know what i mean there's no reason why they can't just keep telling more stories this is the thing it's the quality of the writing the storytelling and the way that they've produced this yeah uh with great actors as well and everything you know that it's, it's, it's just giving it that really polished uh atmospheric style of storytelling that's really engaging and it really like encaptures you into the story well the first thing that i find that actually gets me looking at the screen and going oh my wow that looks really cinematic and mm. it's through the use of its camera work yeah uh, especially exactly. also with its lenses and the way that it also draws depth of field and field of view mm -hmm. depending on the character or whether it's gone to cinematic mode or whether it wants your protagonist to feel it yeah it does a lot of great camera work yeah which just really involves you and also helps you in terms of, so it helps the game in terms of delivering its story Exactly. I mean, this is the thing. The graphics are. If you actually look at the textures, like you look, at, we're looking at this guy, Mr. Jefferson, chatting to us right now. His beard there 
<laughs> you know, it's all it, smushed and blurred. Yeah, it's just like it's uh, n- it looks like somebody's gone with a crayon over his face. <laughs> yeah, or a, or a it's been drawn marker, on. Yeah, and it's just drawn on. But I mean, that's that's the art style of this game. And Unreal Three Engine, uh, Unreal Three Engine is good enough to carry it like you know you can she's got freckles and her hair looks like it's all drawn you know rather than actually tried to be realistic but it doesn't matter because it's almost like a living comic book or, or a living art book that you're reading like a a comic book narrative and it, it's uh, the quality of the characters and the um like the enrichment of the story is so good that you the, the art style is basically just enough to carry it all really well and you completely forget about the art style you just get right into the characters now some people will have criticized the game for this choice of art style and maybe maybe not so much the art style because telltale games is also very similar in its art style if not worse than this yet still yeah. those games carry a lot of weight with it the emotional impact That's that it. the characters and scenes deliver to you especially with your engagement in the choices of how how bad it is you know there's mm. never really a good option it's a case of how how mu- how much worse could it get yeah and uh, so uh, so people have criticized this game's animations especially when there's really heavy heavy emotional stuff going on and sometimes the facial animations just don't are not quite up enough to convey the weight of what's actually going on yeah how would you find that uh there was there was even moments where the lip syncing was just completely boned <laughs> and does it that... just uh, lips stop moving at certain scenes so yeah there are still even after all this time some little problems with the the facial animations you forgive it though because the writing is so good how about the voice acting then and the voice because acting the voice acting needs to be just the, as solid the voice acting matches with the writing yeah and it's good enough to carry because obviously you know it doesn't matter how well written lines are if they're delivered terribly and it's not convincing so yeah it all hinges together really well and the choices you make um, you know, like you, you've got a lot of a various sort of se- series of limited choices, but the way they've written these, craft really good, like moral dilemmas. Okay. Um, they craft really, and what the the way it's written as well, because you're constantly focusing on this main character. I mean, you end up sort of role playing her very well. She is a bit of a blank slate, and you are crafting choices based on your own impression of what so she is you play max and she is yeah, a max photographer Caulfield, or maxine yeah. Caulfield. Yes. she hates being called maxine yeah. yes yeah so call her max <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and I, I i i get the feeling that you discover who you are by the interactions that you have with the other characters and also your inner monologue when yeah. you come across other characters and you got you get to reflect on her point of view as to who these people are you also evolve Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like each, because uh, uh, the thing is with this game is you obviously don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's not really a spoiler by telling you that this game involves being able to rewind time. That is basically. its major perk. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's it, it clearly taken influences from films like The Butterfly Effect. Totally, and, yes. And yeah. other time travel uh, yeah. and slash sci-fi that, epics. And you've just hit everything, which is why I, I was interested <laughs> in this game, because otherwise you're just like, hey, Gary, why... Are you playing a video game where you follow a high school girl around her school, talking to her classmates, dealing with bullying, talking about popular music? Yeah, preppy it's like, high school shit. What are you playing? I'm like, well, this is actually a really interesting sci-fi story. Yeah, she's, and she's, you, and and you're playing it from the perspective of an 18 year old, like um, freshman yes. in college. Now we're just talking about the writing again. Is that yes, a lot of the writing and a lot of the dialogue is about teenagers and yeah. teenagers talking to each other and teenage angst <laughs> and teenage angst oh absolutely and so and you know and all the common things that happen in a high school yeah but throwing in all the extra layers of a lot of dark material and lots of dark themes that this game will cover yeah uh, especially into abusive relationships and, and mm. I don't want to go into too much I've seen the whole game played through yeah um, but there's a lots of sensitive material in this game 
which, you know, if, if you're a sensitive person and you're playing this game, some of the emotional chords that this game will pull will actually leave you, you know, leave you in tears if you're, if you're hard pushed. Yeah, there were this, what's really well, well done about this story is you spend enough time with the character and enough time with the... Uh, enough time with the relationships that you are with with this character, like your key relationships. You spend enough time sort of getting to know those other people and finding out about the way Max interacts with them that you can get a, a real emotional attachment to them yourself. You can share and empathise with that emotional attachment. Yes. And that's what makes this game really good, is it gets you to empathise with this lead character very well. And then you obviously get to get these moral sort of questions that are thrown at you, and then you kind of, you know, you, you almost like impart the uh, decision that you want her to make. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. what you what you feel is the right thing for her to do, if, especially once you start caring about Max and you start caring about her friends. So you, then, what the game does is go, "Oh, you've made that choice, have you?" You know, was that really the right thing to do? Because you're basically in a sort of cycle of badness. There's a lot of bad things going on around you. You got to kind of get to know these characters and piece together so, some of the mysteries of that's going on in the place so where the, you're at. Uh, that's why I like the time travel aspect as well. It's like you know, you have a conversation with somebody and it went pretty badly, and you just go, ah. Oh, I probably should have said that. That probably would have been what that person wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Max has the ability to go back in time and having, and she remembers the conversations she's had with people, even if she's rewound time. Yeah. And can reapproach those conversations and say different things. Yeah, that's and, it. Because she now knows what these people are, are after. Yeah. And that's how you learn more about these people because you've seen the impact, the butterfly effect, essentially as well. Yes. As to the cause and effect <laughs> of all the different. You know, yeah. future paths yeah. that it could take, and exactly. so that's why I love that the, you know you build these interpersonal relationships with characters based on these alternate timelines, which you may or may not have chosen. Yes, which also adds later on to the biggest dramatic points in the game, and that is is commendable because it does tie it up really well. And as you've said, there are there are narrative sort of loose ends towards the end, but all the main ones and the main story all does come together if a yes. little bit over the top in places but well it, I, I, I I when I was watching the game played through I kept thinking of Donnie Darko yeah I mean this the, this is the thing there's like a whole bunch of other sci-fi films that have uh, touched on the very very similar themes to this I mean almost the, exactly the same themes yeah and have done it done it their own way the thing that makes this great is it's, it's set in sleepy Oregon, a place called Arcadia Bay on the coast of Oregon, which is like a very kind of like atmospheric, sleepy town. Port, like uh, that whole area in Oregon, is kind of like very scenic, very beautiful anyway. So it's got this kind of unique atmosphere to it. Max is a quite a relatable character because she's quite a sort of um, they're in a fairly moderate kind of area. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yeah, like a yeah. politically moderate kind of area. So you're not really like looking at crazy extremes of stuff um, for the main, main characters. That makes it really easy to get into. And the thing that makes this unique is you've obviously with with the movies and the books that have touched on this before you've got this, this kind of a template or a, you, an idea. Yeah, you get a slice of the narrative of and of the possibilities of what might have happened if uh, as time's been changed yeah. and as the butterfly effect rolls out but as Maxine playing with this power to reverse time and look the little Illuminati yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, to reverse time she's obviously then got uh, the ability to see all of the different ways that things can play out and so you kind of get to tell more of a story that way do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you you get to sort of see. I don't know why I'm stuck in this bathroom. Why, what can't I do anything? Oh, I, I know why. Because I've got to look at. Down so, here. how do you find the gameplay? Moving around, interacting with objects, knowing what to do. What's the puzzle solving elements like? Well, um, 
it's, it's not too intrusive that's the most important thing and the, the stuff you do do like a lot of the stuff the puzzles there are kind of voluntary yeah do you know what I mean? So if you like, if you don't give a shit, then you don't do it, and, and that just becomes part of your narrative. If you like that character and you're like, oh no, you know, like I would do that this for that person, then you do it, and uh, that also becomes part of your narrative and it has consequences. The obviously the the end it still comes down to ultimately the same end point, of the way this narrative goes, but. There are enough key differences in the way that your ending happens and enough key differences in what happens along the way with other key characters. To help shape that final yeah, decision. And, and you're like, and yeah, it's basically, you know, it's still very satisfying. You know, it does, it's, I wish Mass Effect, the, you know, the first three. Yeah. You know, I wish Mass Effect had this many different alternative realities that you can get through to it. Do you know what I mean? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is obviously a much smaller game than Mass Effect, so, but yeah. Mass Effect 3 was a much bigger epic with more characters involved. Yeah. You can tell they've had to limit the number of characters in this story just to... So that because of all the possibilities and causes and effects and that would change things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, some people have still criticised that as well with this game, that there are towards the end of the game some levels which could have perhaps done with a little bit more attention mm. or, in fact, additional levels created which you might not ever see in audio, which you might never hear mm. because of that, you know, that you know um, weaving path of choices that you'd have to make to get to that outcome exactly, it would mean yeah. you know unfortunately like with Mass Effect 3 where you have all of those choices that you've made all trying to weave their way into a third game and that third game could have easily been 20 games yeah. all made and yeah. you would only experience one twentieth of that game because of all your previous choices they have to yeah, find a way it. to it... limit development time and, but still cater to that's all it. those choices the, and so this is a microcosm of that yeah, yeah exactly Exactly, it's a microcosm of that. I mean, that's it. Mass Effect tried to make that carry over three actual different games, whereas this is just doing it over one one game, and it's done five episodes. And they've crafted this narrative from beginning to end, yeah, and then made it carry through. Whereas Mass Effect carries the burden of the fact that clearly they started out with one intention, and then had to basically renege on it because it was too ambitious yeah whereas this has kind of gone in i clearly gone in to try to achieve this knowing its limitations right at the beginning and so they've made all of the narratives sort of resolve the the key narratives resolve in a satisfying way that it that it makes you feel like you're going through a series of endpoints rather than everything building up to a disappointing yeah single end point if you know what i mean yeah so yeah it's kind of, it's cool I, I i think it's very well done so would you now complete in the game go back and play the game from start to finish absolutely yeah but i'd say i'd say what i probably do is i give it a little break because i've gone play through that narrative once but so good was it like uh like with game of thrones say Again, an example of an excellently well-crafted narrative from beginning to end. Once you get to the end of Game of Thrones, there's no doubt about it, I'll have a little break and then I'll go back and I'll binge watch, watch from, from beginning start. to end. Yeah. And that's one of those films that I think you would, you know, you could go back another sort of three, four years later and you'd quite happily watch, watch it, all, it again all again because there's so yeah. much in, in to appreciate it. Yeah. And well, this, I mean, that, is... the thing is Game of Thrones will never change once that's been made and produced. That's how it is. But yeah. when you play replay a game like this, you will find it not as fresh as your first playthrough but you know, if you make different choices deliberately just to affect the outcome then yeah. you know it's it's not going to be as personal as your first playthrough because mm. that was all of the choices you made reflecting on the character and yeah. yourself and a second playthrough is more of a a what if what yeah. if i sabotage yeah, time yeah, and, exactly. and try to ruin everything as much as possible well it's it, kind of fun well, in its own way but it it's kind of loops within itself because you can rewind time and play through in the game 
you also being outside of the game can go back to the beginning and start at the beginning yeah and then because there's enough things that have knock-on effects you wonder if i'd done that right at the beginning how would that have changed it right at the end yeah. And so that you have enough questions that you you kind of really want to play those out. Sure, yeah. And, and you can, you know, like, obviously you can skip parts of the text where you're... Um, Re-going over the same Stuff territory. that you don't need to know again. So you can kind of ru- rush through it a lot quicker. You can spend a bit more time looking around and exploring as well on the second playthroughs because there's, there's things like collectibles and stuff like that, if that's your thing, to get all those. Um, and p- places to take loads of photos and stuff like that. So, yeah. so how how many hours did you invest into it before completion? Ah, uh, that's a very good and question. What was your, so how long a sort of gaming session at a time would you devote to playing it? It gets longer. The later episodes take longer. So um, I think it took probably about two hours, two to three hours an episode, depending on how much time you spend looking around at stuff. Yeah two to three hours for the first couple of episodes and then it started to extend to like four or five hours an episode okay probably well the game is still retailing at about 15 pounds or 15 dollars mm. but the game has been in sale a few times since then yeah uh, what would you recommend retail price what, what would you buy this game for as a recommendation um well I've got it from a key site for like a fiver yeah. so you can get it right now for pretty pretty cheap um, already so I would probably wouldn't pay more than a fiver now because that is currently Completely. what you can buy it for yeah um, but I mean if you bought this game for 15 quid I think you'd still be you pretty still happy with it well. yeah. 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 yeah you'd still be pretty damn happy with it it was still very good uh, maybe even I mean, I would say the story is good enough. It reminds me of, like, The Last of Us. It, this is the sort of game that Sony Productions would love to snap up because it's got that kind of hipster, chic feel and atmosphere to it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, they could probably have gone with £20 and they still would have done very well. Yeah. You know, I'd say... I don't think it's a 30 or £40 epic title. It's not 200 hours of gameplay. See, I've always been a big it's fan so of, those, well done. of just mainly story-driven story, story driven games. It's mm. went all the way back. I, I think in the UK it was called Fahrenheit, or in America it was called Fahrenheit, and, mm. and, and its other name was Indigo Prophecy. Yeah. Which... Was uh, I remember playing it on the original Xbox, and it was, it was really the first game that I'd played where it dealt with adult themes and materials and elements of. I'm not remember if it's time travel. I, it's been so long since I played it. I just remember that it was a game that just encouraged talking to people and exploring your environment and developing this overall narrative and then yeah. and then having all of these elements which just changed I think he was suffering from amnesia and you ended up waking up in a bathroom with, and there was a murder victim mm. and you end up running away and it just kept building all these layers as you discover who your character is building and more else. mystery yes totally mm-hmm. and so I, I just I've always enjoyed those games I liked Heavy Rain which was on the PlayStation. It's also, yeah, it's yeah. very similar to that sort of very thing, similar. Heavy Rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm. And so I've always always craved those games. And there was another another one on the PlayStation um, which had lots of uh, celebrities and voice actors in it, and it was the horror, survival horror game, where oh, it was yeah. pretty much, a, you know, it's like an 80s horror movie out in the cabin in, you know, in the mountains. And, uh, it, but it's a sort of, there is a, a market for those games and I want to see more like it and this has been the closest thing since because Telltale you know as good as they are I want to see you know I want next level generation graphics and and, uh, and facial animations yeah. to do it really well and have mm. my books my stories told in, in that interactive way Yeah, I, I would like to see more of it and so supporting this game and you know and then if they get round to Life is Strange 2 mm-hmm. definitely I'll, you know these are they're a niche type of game because there's not many else like it mm. Square Enix bagged a great one with this one with this studio to get their publishing deal with them they're independent so it's clearly Square Enix isn't going to be telling them what to do but I bet Square Enix with a game like this wants the sequel yeah do you know what I mean Square Enix got some of the best facial animation technologies around and 
uh, they're, ba they're basically market leaders <laughs> in yeah. high quality graphics. So you can guarantee these studios, I bet they'll get some kind of assistance from Squaresoft to make the next that vampire look really good. Yeah. We had a little ganders, didn't we, at the sort of like pre-alpha stuff. And yeah, the animations were still dodgy, but you could tell that after a little bit of time of tweaking the whatever engine they're doing that in, it's going to look fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So and they also got the lighting very well, uh, which works very well, which is which is great in setting the atmosphere and also when you have great lighting, you can really cover up maybe some of the lacking textures in in the game and they're setting themselves up for more great morality decisions because yeah. you again you're having to empathize with the character which is a little bit of a blank slate but in, it's going to be facing lots of moral dilemmas yes so Mm, fucking <laughs> so yeah, brilliant. brilliant. I, I'm, I'm looking really, really looking forward to it. It's gonna be brilliant. Yeah. So as you, as you can see, we highly recommend Absolutely. Life is Strange. Yeah. You know, it has it has a few drawbacks. In my opinion, there's a couple of sections later in the game where there's almost a stealth mechanic, where you're kind of avoiding being detected, and you know. But other than that, it is a solid narratively driven game with some great great writing which really elevates and brings not just the two main characters of Max and Chloe but the whole town mm -hmm. which again just keeps you going and wanting to find out how it all comes together in the end and then yeah like I said give it a break and then go back and play it again so yeah this game I highly recommend it's available on almost every platform yeah 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 absolutely it's, I would say it's a must play <laughs> yes definitely well, that's going to be it from us here this week on Off The Shelf Reviews. Just want to say thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next Friday with another video game. Of course, film reviews on Thursday. So you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Take it easy.